Hey everyone, Mano back here, and today we're showing you how anyone can solo the Prophecy Dungeon in Season of the Lost. This is a very safe and effective build to use, and it only requires things that you can easily find inside of Destiny 2. You'll also notice no raid exotics. Ooh. This is a great time to farm the Prophecy Dungeon and solo it if you don't have a team to do it because there are some amazing weapons, the reprised Trials of the Nine weapons that have returned. This build is all about survival and staying alive through trash mobs. We'll show you how to do that. Use a Void Walker with the Devour build. That's the bottom tree. If you don't know how Devour works, kills with this melee ability fully regenerate your health and you can keep that going with the insatiable perk when the devour effect is active killing enemies extend its duration and recharges your grenade well why is that important well because of the feed the void piece consume your grenade energy to regenerate your health and grants the devour effect you basically chain this together for as much as possible and you kill lots of trash mobs use your super if you absolutely need to and you can stay alive through pretty much anything we're going to be using the Risk Runner submachine gun, which almost everybody has. When you take arc damage, you basically get a thing called Arc Conductor, which will allow you to shoot infinitely as long as the buff is applied. And since there's so much taken in here, you can basically keep this going infinitely. And that way you proc the Devour perk constantly and you're good to go. What other things do you need? A sniper rifle is nice. It doesn't matter which one you have. I also recommend either a shotgun or grenade launcher, whatever you're comfortable with. If you have a grenade launcher, having blinding grenades is huge. And then if you have a shotgun, any kind of auto loading perk like slide shot or auto loading holster is going to be amazing. And we're going to be changing between all of those. In the heavy slot, I'm going to be using a falling guillotine or any sword that you want. Relentless strikes and whirlwind blade is nice just because you can keep your ammo capacity pretty high while outputting lots of damage. But for the final boss, this season, we want to make sure that we have either a fusion or a linear fusion rifle. I'm going to be using Sleeper Simulant because it is easily obtainable from the exotic kiosk. So all you need is an exotic cipher and some materials and anybody can pick this up. If you do have 1000 voices from the last wish raid, you can 100% use this in place of Sleeper Simulant and it will do a better job. If you've been living under a rock, then you probably don't know about the particle deconstruction mod on this season's artifact which makes fusion rifles absolutely insane for damage and the best clear choice for this. So we're going to be switching back and forth between the fallen guillotine. You'll also notice that on the seasonal artifact, we've got the passive guard mod, which you receive less damage from combatants that are close to you when you're wielding a sword. You can basically run a sword all the way to the end of the boss. So when the time comes, just switch between two class items, one with passive guard and one with particle deconstruction. At this point, you want to have some kind of a build that's built around having high energy fire in your set. I also like having transversive steps on my leg armor, but you can build this however you want. I usually do a charged up mod, a stacks on stacks mod if you've got that. They are required, but they certainly do help. All right, enough yak, and let's get into the dungeon itself. First of all, if you want to skip the entire first encounter, you want to chad your way through this, go ahead and hop on the first sphere and then go through this tunnel here. Sword swipe your way up to the top and you will be good to go. Not everybody is comfortable with this, and I would recommend that if you're going to do this, use Top Tree Dawn Blade with a Warlock with Rising Heat and then use your dashes to move up as quickly as you possibly can. Also, make sure that you go pick up sword ammo from a public event rally flag before you start. A lot of times when I run with people, people try to chad their way up to the top, but a lot of times it takes more time than actually doing the encounter. What is the first encounter? It's pretty simple. It explains this whole light dark moat concept that you're gonna be using throughout the entire raid. It's pretty simple. When you're in the shade, you'll notice there's a dark effect on your screen that you can see at the bottom right now. And when you're in the light, you see a white effect. You basically want to kill certain enemies while you see that effect and they will drop certain amounts of moats. For example, right here, you can see that I am standing in the light and there is a light moat right in front of us. Collect five moats. As soon as you do that, you can go ahead and deposit in the areas where you see the light or dark respectively and move on. For the first encounter, you have to open up these two doors. You'll need a big light moat and a big dark moat. Again, you get those from collecting five. And usually what I do is I collect dark moats from this back area here because there's a lot of dark. And then I go up to the front to collect the light moat for the second door. After you do that, you'll chase the Taken Captain all the way up to the top of this area here. And then you'll see an area with some rings. That is where the first real encounter of this dungeon starts. 
The mechanics of this fight are the same as the previous fight. There's just a boss and more enemies involved. There are light and dark columns that you need to deposit moats into. But in the meantime, there are a bunch of things trying to kill you. What you need to do during this fight is one thing and one thing alone. Don't die. Yeah, seriously. That's it. Don't die. I know that seems very simplistic and very basic inside of a video game, but it needs to be said how much aggro these enemies have. They will not stop shooting at you. They are relentless. And when they start to chase you, they won't stop. They'll chase you around corners and try to murder you. You need to stay alive, which is your first priority. Don't push for moats just because your timer is low. If you need to, just reset and start again. All right, so the reason I'm using Risk Runner, you can see that when I deposit these dark moats here, as soon as I take arc damage, I have got arc conductor procced, and then I can start using my devourer grenade and stay alive by killing lots of enemies. And that devourer timer starts at 10 seconds, and then my arc conductor lasts for about five. The boss and the Taken Scions are constantly hitting you with arc energy, so you are able to chain that and kill them as quickly as possible. And what's nice is that they group together very easily, so you can get your life back very quickly and even get them set up to take damage or get them weak, so you're able to kill the Knights, who are the ones that drop those moats, get them weak, and then you're able to take them out when you're comfortable and in a good position, and then you can go deposit them. Now, one of the great things about our conductor is you can actually just shoot the boss and even though he's immune he will chain the arc conducting energy to everything you can do this and easily kill enemies that are behind the shield and then you don't have to worry about them constantly splitting and you can continue to get your life back with very minimal effort when you're in a good position you can actually use a sword and kill any of those knights if you need any moats and you know you can be safe one thing I do recommend is that if you need to run and break the line of cover from the enemies, you can do that and then deposit the moats later. But again, they are relentless. Usually if you're running in a team of three, they will spread out the aggro. But when it's just you, they are going to come after you with the fire of a thousand suns. So kill them before they kill you. Once you knock out all four columns of light or dark respectively, then the barrier will drop and you can go ahead and do DPS. All the other enemies will disappear so you can focus your super there and then you can go to town with your sword. Swords are really good for soloing this because you don't have to worry about getting precision shots. You can basically just keep your ammo capacity super high, especially if you have a whirlwind blade sword and keep going until he's dead. If he does not die in the first phase, he spawns some Taken Vex that will actually shield him, so you'll need to knock them out before you go and do damage again. At this point, if you want to farm the first encounter, you certainly can, and the things that you can pick up from this encounter are the Judgment Hand Cannon, the Long Walk Sniper Rifle, or Legs, or the Class Item. On the subject of farming loot, the loot inside the dungeon this season is a little bit strange. The community has come to the consensus that the weapon that you get for the week is the one that you are locked into for that week. So as much as you farm an encounter, if you get the hand cannon, that's all you can get. If you need to run it again to try and get a different weapon, run it on a different character and you should be good to go for another chance. You can get armor at any time, but if this changes, I'm going to leave a comment down in the pinned comment down below. Next section is the Heaven Hell area or the Sand Dunes area where you can sparrow around and have a little bit of fun in here. What you're going to be looking for is an area with three blights and a bunch of enemies. It's really simple. You need to destroy those three blights as quickly as you possibly can and then you need to go find the white ball of light. Once you approach the ball of light, he will teleport to a different area. You need to chase him and rinse and repeat. You'll do that for a total of three times. I highly recommend taking care of the snipers in this area, especially because they can kill you very quickly and you want to stay alive because there are different enemies that are going to be chasing you and trying to kill you. And when you're in the blights, you take damage. Now, if you have it available, like I just showed you on screen, if you have the Black Talon Exotic Sword, you can one-shot the blights with a charged shot. There is a secret chest in the Heaven Hell area that drops you duplicate weapons and armor that you've earned. Look for this tower and the yellow dust that is in front of it. There is a small little hole that you can go through. There is going to be an enemy that is blocking that, so be careful on your way out. 
Once you've destroyed all the blights and approached the light three times, you'll get a description that says the way is open. The light will be in front of an area that is going to be the next section. So just look around for this area that looks like this. You'll see the light by that door over there and there will be a ramp. Go ahead and follow him into the next area. For the hexahedron room, I recommend having a sniper, a sword, and your risk runner again. You'll see Toland right in front of you on a circular plate, and you'll see circular plates throughout the room. Toland is going to be showing you what type of modes you need to pick up, light or dark. There'll be columns of light underneath on these circular plates on the floor, and you'll need to follow him around to see what he's saying. Now, if it is on the ceiling, you can pick up light or dark, but you need to see what columns are available because I have had it where there are all dark columns or all light columns when Toland is on the ceiling. So this part is very similar to the last fight. There's a bunch of enemies that are trying to kill you, kill them first. You can see I've already procced Risk Runner and Devour ready to go. Now, the reason you have a sniper is because there are going to be taken hobgoblins trying to snipe you. Once you kill them, that will spawn the knights that will actually give you the moats. So go ahead and look to see which ones you need, and then you can go ahead and pick up your moats. In this case, I have Toland showing me a dark column. I pick up the moats, deposit them, and we are ready to go. Once you're ready, go into the middle platform and move on. Be careful because even though hobgoblins will disappear once you've done that, the other ads will not stop firing at you. So be careful. So you can see here, I'm looking to see what column I need. In this case, I need a light column. I'm going to go ahead and charge up my devour and I'm going to get these enemies to start procking the arc conductor and I'm going to slay them. Take care of the hobgoblins, rinse and repeat. Now, you don't have to use Risk Runner on this part. If you want, you can certainly use Devour or another class. Some people like using something like Xenophage or Sleeper at this part. It's all up to you, but I find this to be the simplest and easiest to do. As soon as a knight spawns up and I know what type of moats I need to get, I either use a sword to kill them at close range or a sniper at far range. The sniper gives me an option to stay inside of cover or to go specifically to any of the type of light or dark areas that I need and do it safely while hiding behind cover. On the sixth rotation, you will face the final room with two taken bosses. This room always looks the same. There's two small column platforms. What you'll want to do is kill the bosses as quickly as possible. Maybe you've been holding on to your super. You can just nuke the boss right there and use your sword to take out one and then take out the other. Honestly, if you're able to take them out very, very quickly without dying to adds, they are very easy to kill. Just watch out for their stomp mechanic and kill them as quickly as possible see why we have passive guard on we didn't take much damage when we actually got stomped if we did not have that on we would be in the red after each stomp for the second encounter the weapons are the last breath auto rifle and a swift verdict sidearm with arms as the drop once you've picked up your loot turn around and you will follow the light over into the heaven hell area once again once you are there, you're going to go follow the Taken Captain over on the right. It's really simple. Just go to the right until you see a building or a wall. There'll be a crack in it, and that is where the Taken Captain is leading you, and that'll lead you to the Ribbon Road. Once you've reached the Ribbon Road, aka Singularity, you'll see a bunch of ribbons that you can travel down plus some platforms. Out of Warlock, if you want to make sure that you don't die, especially if you're solo flawlessing this, use Top Tree Dawnblade, so if you need to use Heat Rises or Dashes to stay alive if you fall off the edge, you'll be good to go. Basically, just travel down these ribbons if you're comfortable using a Sparrow. If you want to take the super, super safe route, you certainly can take the platforms down. There are a number of platforms that have enemies and you can jump down them. I find that most people are able to do this with a Sparrow. You don't have to boost. Just don't boost if you're not comfortable or you're on a solo flawless run and just slowly make your way down. You do need to be careful because there are snipers that are going to go after you. So make sure that you're moving quick enough to get past them. Honestly, you should be able to take them out pretty easily if you want to get off your Sparrow and just knock them out with that sniper we used in the last encounter. There are a couple of areas where the ribbons go in such a fashion that you won't be able to continue traveling on them. 
either hop off your sparrow and jump over, or if you're comfortable using your sparrow, you can go ahead and move slowly onto the platforms. Again, this is based on your comfort level. Do whatever is best for you. There is another secret chest in this area. As you approach the final pyramid shape, you'll see these arcs here. Don't go over that. Go ahead and turn to your right. There is a cubby here that you can fall down. Go to the left-hand side, jump across the chasm right here. And in this little hallway, there will be a chest. Just like the previous chest, it will give you duplicates of whatever armor and weapons that you've already earned. Go back on up and follow your way to the final platform here. Do note that this is still very, very glitchy. So don't just stay on your sparrow praying and hoping that it will take you, kill the enemies if you need to, and then go back and forth onto your sparrow if you need to. You can see here that the enemies got teleported, but I didn't. So I hopped on my sparrow for just a second and I got teleported. There's a bunch of enemies here that are around the corner. You don't have to kill them. Just head into the final boss room. Okay, it's boss fight time. And this is the thing that has probably changed the most for Season of the Lost in terms of loadout, survivability, and more. We'll get into that here in just a second. This boss fight is very similar to the last couple of encounters. You'll see three columns around the room. They'll have either light or dark columns. Figure out which ones you need to get. Go ahead in the light in the dark area. Kill the knights that will be trying to kill you. They drop moats. Pick up the moats until you've got the maximum level. Deposit and you should be good to go. Do note that there are three of the taken boss that are trying to kill you. Once you deposit them, an ogre is going to appear in the corner of the room. So right here, I'm going to deposit the dark moats and an ogre is going to appear behind me. You can take them out at your leisure. I'm going to go ahead and get my devour effect set up and I'm going to use a shotgun to nuke them. If you like to use a grenade launcher, you can certainly use that here as well. But I felt more comfortable using a shotgun in this encounter as it seemed to stun the enemies a little bit more and stagger them. You will notice that I am not using a linear fusion rifle and that is because I want the survivability of passive guard as well as the ability to go after enemies that are at close quarters. If I'm using a fusion rifle, like say for example, I've got 1k in this particular section, I could die. If you're doing this in a group, I would definitely just have linear fusion or fusion rifles ready to go as the aggro will be spread out. But just like the first encounter, the goal is to survive. Proc devour as much as you need to, to help stay alive. Now, once you've got all three corners cleared, you can go into the middle and go to the next area. But for soloing this, I don't recommend doing that right away. The reason is because again, you're not going for speed, you're going for survivability. If you're soloing it at this portion, you need to be looking around for ammo. I'm going to switch to the sleeper simulant here in just a second so I can do damage to the boss. And I'm going to use all these extra spawns of the enemies to hopefully spawn up heavy ammo. If heavy ammo drops anywhere during this portion of the fight, I will run around it on purpose so that I can pick it up afterwards. Use these extra spawns of taken scions to either get your super or grenade energy back really easily, especially when using your devour and your risk runner. Once you're ready to go into the boss damage area, change to sleeper simulant as well as your sniper. It doesn't matter what energy weapon you switch off to, whatever you feel is comfortable. All right, it is boss damage time, and I'll show you how I handle this when I am doing this solo. You will see yourself in a long hallway and the boss in front of you, plus some platforms, plus an aura around the boss. You'll notice that there is a light energy field around him. If you are close enough to the boss, you will not take dark entropy, but if you're super, super far back, you'll actually end up dying to dark entropy. What you want to do is as much damage to the boss so he stays on the platforms for as long as possible. But you also, when doing this solo, want to get in front of the enemies. The snipers will take you out if you're not being aggressive against them. And you can see that I'm starting to move forward to stay either ahead or actually side to side with the boss. The reason to do this, again, is survivability. Whenever I get a chance and I can do damage to the boss while being safe, I'm going to go ahead and take advantage of triple tap on my sniper. Again, not required, but very nice. You can also see I use my sniper to take out those hobgoblins that are trying to wreck me at the other side of the room. I take control of the encounter, knock them out, and now it's just me and the boss. 
I'm taking control of the encounter and I'll have lots of time to do really solid DPS and not miss a shot. This will help me, especially when using Sleeper, because I can get the precision damage on him here very easily and stay safe. Another thing that the Warlock is using is my transversive steps. If I wanted to, I could run around and reload my weapon without actually reloading, but I just want to make sure I'm getting my precision hits here. You'll see I actually run out of all my ammo. I get him down to a third of health, and I still have sniper ammo left. Again, like I said earlier, the more damage you do to the boss, the longer he will stay on the platforms. But after a certain period of time, he'll teleport into the pyramid and then you will be back to the first phase. Change to your risk runner and shotgun slash grenade launcher, as well as a sword. You'll notice that I don't have to worry about losing heavy ammo because I've used it all. I'm going to wait until my grenade comes back and that I can charge up devour and then I can move into the room once again. Once you hop into the Pyramid Teleporter, you'll be teleported into one of four different rooms, but the encounter is still the same. Look around the corners of the room, look to see if you need light or dark modes, pick them up, deposit them, stay alive, and you're good to go. The key thing to remember is to use cover and remember that Devour is not perfect. You are still going to be taking an extremely high amount of damage from all of these enemies. Sometimes you won't be able to stand your ground. Sometimes you need to run for cover and get your life back. Do whatever it takes to stay alive, whether that's eating a grenade, putting down a rift. Do be careful because if you have the maximum amount of moats and you put down a rift, your moat will go away and you'll have to pick it up again. So make sure you're not carrying the big moat or the maximum amount of moats you can get and you should be good to go. I would recommend that you have a helmet with sword ammo finder during this portion as that will drop you heavy ammo and then switch to linear fusion rifle. Always have linear fusion reserves on your armor and you'll be set. On my first run of this, I was actually very, very lucky when I picked up ammo on the first rotation, but on the second and the third rotation, I didn't get any, but I was still able to do a really good amount of damage. For me with Sleeper, it took four rotations to do the boss. And if you were using something like 1000 voices, I could easily see you doing this in three phases, as long as you have the particle deconstruction mod on. Make sure that you change to that during this portion of the boss fight. Take him out and you are good to go. From the third phase, you can get the darkest before pulse rifle and the sudden death shotgun, as well as a helm, a chest, or a class item. And that's it, everybody. That is how anybody can solo the Prophecy Dungeon in Season of the Lost. It does take a little practice to get this strategy down, but with a little time and a little effort, you can get this down and easily solo this dungeon. If you don't want to solo it and you want to come get some help inside the dungeons, come on over to twitch.tv slash manodestra. I do a bunch of PvE helps from raids to GMs to nightfalls to exotic quests and dungeons. We do a ton of help over there. If you like this video or learned anything from it, slam that like button and leave a comment down below. Not only does that help me focus the videos for you, but also it helps the YouTube algorithm to recommend this to other people who might be working on this same content inside of Destiny. If you want to see more Destiny content, consider subscribing to the channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss a single video. We have an awesome community Discord that is starting to liven up as we get ready for Witch Queen. That link is down in the description box below. Good hunting, Guardians. I will see you next time in the universe of Destiny.